All right. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see you all this morning. This is a beautiful Palm Sunday, isn't it? It's beautiful outside. We get to sing extra songs. That's always good. My name's Neil. I'm the pastor at this church, and I love to start off every single service with, um, with the message. I love to start those off with really corny jokes. So that's what we're going to do today. And I feel like these are a 9 on a, on a 10 scale. Do you feel the anticipation? If you've been around for a while, you're not believing anything I say right now. All right. So, first one. If your lawyer is wearing a suit that doesn't fit and talking on a flip phone, you're going to jail. Just kind of good. Everybody at first service said not to say this joke, but I kind of want to. <laughs> say it? Are you down? Okay. Some girls don't like to walk in the rain because it puts their face back to factory setting. <laughs> they said not to say it. Do you, are you okay with that? You guys feel okay? The guys in the room clap. <laughs> This is an actual label that's on the back of a package of bacon. On the, back of, on the back of bacon, it says this, pan fry slowly on medium heat until cooked to your satisfaction. If you really don't uh, know how to cook bacon, contact your elected officials and complain about the education system. Every American should know how to cook bacon. A couple more. You guys okay with that? There's a new uh, way to look up your Kelly Blue Book value of your car. It now asks if your tank is full or empty. That's going to determine the price of your car. Do you believe that? Okay. And speaking of gas, I got gas for $1.39 the other day. The only thing was it was at Taco Bell. Take these home with you. Feel free to use them throughout your week. Well, today we're just going to read the story of Palm Sunday. Uh, normally my messages are about 20 to 30 hours long. And uh, we just wanted to spend a lot more time in worshiping God and just singing. Don't we have just such an amazing worship team every week? We're so blessed. And uh, so we felt like, you know, for Palm Sunday, it makes sense to just, let's just praise God, and we're going to continue doing that. But I did want to read what this story was and how Jesus came into the town of Jerusalem and how he's riding on a donkey. And then I uh, just wanted to point out a couple of things in that story that maybe could apply to our life. And then uh, we're going to get back to singing and baptizing people, so it should be fun. Let's uh, go ahead and read Matthew 21, and we're going to read 1 through 9. So if you have your Bible, you can turn there. It's going to be up here on the screen, too. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then uh, we'll jump right in. God, we thank you so much for the plans that you have for us this morning, the plans that you speak to each one of us individually, that you use your word. It's alive. It's living. It always applies. There's always something that we can get in the depths of your word. And so, Lord, uh, just pray that you would just speak to our hearts. Lord, would you use me? Um, I just choose to get out of your way, my thoughts, my plans. Just choose to get out of your way. And would you speak directly to uh, each person's heart? Use this entire service, Lord. We just praise you. We just we, uh, echo the, the praises of, of all the other churches, um, even in the Quad Cities and in the world, that are just lifting their voice in praise to you. We thank you that you are a God that is so good to us. Have your way, in Jesus' name, amen. So I just want to read this passage, Matthew 21, so good. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go into the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. 
This took place to fulfill this, what was spoken through the prophet. Say it to the daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and they placed their cloaks on, on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread the cloaks on the, ro- on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them across the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Such a phenomenal story, isn't it? There's a couple of things that, as I was just praying about this, this passage today that the Lord just kind of pointed out to me. And one is, is this, is that Jesus rode on a donkey's colt. And the disciples, from the disciples' perspective, they had been following Jesus. They left their jobs to follow Jesus because Jesus is going to be the king of Jerusalem. And so if you read the New Testament and if you read the Gospels, the disciples are always arguing about who's going to be right next to Jesus. Okay, I'm going to be at his right side and you'll be at his left side and you'll have this kingdom and I'll take care of that kingdom. And they thought Jesus was coming to rule and reign the kingdom of Jerusalem. And so the disciples are told to go get a donkey. And everything in me just wonders how much the disciples just kind of push back on that. A donkey? You're going to ride a donkey into the city? I think of that as it's a donkey, but it's also a donkey's colt. So here's Jesus, and he's riding on this donkey's colt. His feet are probably dragging on the ground. It's just a little thing. Why wouldn't you want to ride a majestic animal into the city if you're going to take it over? Ride in on a horse and a chariot, and the disciples could be on chariots with him. And instead... Jesus says, go get me a donkey, and then they put their cloaks on it, and then he rides that into the city. He's coming down the center main street of Jerusalem. Wait a second. Like, this doesn't make any sense, Jesus. And I find myself there a lot of times. I don't know about you guys, but Jesus, this doesn't make any sense. The plans that I had looked a lot different than what's happening right now. What I thought was going to happen, what I envisioned, like the disciples envisioned being served grapes and and eating this amazing meal each day and being kings. But Jesus instead rides in on a donkey. We find ourselves there. I don't understand how you're going to make sense of this, Jesus. Has anybody else asked Jesus these questions? God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't understand what you're doing. It doesn't make any sense. And the thing that God pointed out to me is this, is that the disciples chose to still praise God. If it were me, I would cross my arms and I'd walk out of the city. I'm throwing a fit. I'm not getting my way. But the disciples instead went ahead of Jesus and praised him and grabbed branches themselves and shouted, Hosanna, This is the king of kings, and this is how he's going to become king. I guess I'm going to trust him in this because I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm going to choose to praise him anyways. And that's, I just love that about this story. So they chose to praise God even when it didn't make sense. And that can be our heart too. I found some really uh, peaceful moments with the Lord where something's going on in my life. There's a lot of turmoil. Um, I would say in the last three years, there's been a lot of opportunities that I just want to cross my arms. But there's power when we say, you know what? I don't understand what you're doing, God. I don't know what you're doing here, but I'm going to choose to praise you anyways. I don't get it. I don't understand. I'm frustrated. This isn't working out like I I expected, but I'm going to choose to praise you anyways. I just see the disciples in that this morning. And I see us in that. I see this church. That we can lift our hearts up, we can lift our mouths and praise God no matter what we walked in the door with. 
that if we're looking for hope and we haven't really been experiencing it, that as we praise God, there will be hope that fills this room. When we're looking for peace, that it's through praise that God actually fills us with peace. That we can choose to praise God in all circumstances, in all situations, in anything going on in our life. We can just say, you know what? I don't understand it, God. I'm not really on board with your direction and your plans. You want to ride a donkey in the town? Go ahead and grab a horse. It could be so much more cool. But this is what you're doing, so I'm going to choose to praise you anyways. I'm going to choose to just praise you. In fact, I'm going to get ahead of the crowd in front of everyone else, and I'm going to start to shout Hosanna in the highest. I'm going to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. Not what, oh, what's everybody else feeling like? No, I'm going to go ahead and get in front of everyone and just praise God. And so you can follow me or you can turn away, but I choose to praise the Lord. That's the disciples' heart in this passage. Do you see that? It's a powerful story, isn't it? Of people just saying, you know what? I praise God. He's my king. He's my Lord. And so we're going to do that. And the reason is, is because I think our name's supposed to be added to this story today. Your name, my name, our name's added to that story. That the crowd, city, church, crowd, First service and second service, people that are getting ready to experience people following Jesus in the ways of baptism, people that are getting ready to experience people dedicating their children to God, that our names are added to this story this morning, that we say, you know what, I'm going to choose to praise God no matter what I walked in the door with. My heart says, God is awesome. He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. I don't have to understand everything that he's doing, but I choose to praise him today. Do you want to add your name to that list, to this list? Here's what I'd love for us to do. I want us to sing one song. And instead of palm trees, we're going we're gonna to have baptisms here in a second. So if you're getting baptized, I invite you to just come over to the side hall over here. We're just going to pray with you. Um, but instead of baptisms, one thing that I'd love for us to do is let's use our phones And let's turn the light on on it. And let's bring down the lights in the room. (laughs) And that can be be our palm trees this morning, is the the lit up phone. Sound good? It's It's a palm. It's It's an apple. Yeah. So if you have a light on your phone, go ahead and turn it on. Should be fun. And we're just going to go ahead and stand up and we're going to sing this song. Just invite you to just sing out no matter what's going on in your life. Just use that as, as your palm this morning. You don't have to do that. You're welcome to. So God, we just choose to praise you. Lord, would you add our names to this list, this list of people that that rode into the city and just said, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Glory to God in the highest. Jesus, be magnified in my life. Even without uh, an understanding of what's happening here, uh, geez, I got a lot of concerns or um, I haven't really thought this through. Lord, that their hearts were just dedicated to just saying, Jesus, you rule, you reign, you You are the king. And so, Lord, that's our heart this morning. Without knowing what's going to happen tomorrow, without knowing what's going to happen today, with things that we question, with all of that stuff, Lord, we just choose to praise you and we put you on the throne of our hearts. Lord, I just thank you so much that you've just been so faithful to each one of us in this room. And so if you don't do anything else from this moment on, we have enough to praise you Uh, from what you've already done. And so, Lord, just have your way. Be praised, Lord. Jesus, be glorified. Worship you, God. Jesus, sing this song.